In today's video, I go into a rapture over the new Estee Lauder collaboration, the Pure Color Dare to Express eyeshadow palette. Plus, we'll talk about the new meteorites packaging, scent, and shades. Hello, print princesses, and welcome back to Not Fit for Print Beauty with me. Rebecca. Today, as you saw in the preview, we have two really lovely products that I think curate really nicely together from Estee Lauder and Guerlain. I am so happy to have you here. Don't forget that you can also follow me over on Instagram, TikTok, and on threads. Okay, we're going to get started here today, but if you are in a hurry or only interested in one of these products, I'd love to have you here for the whole thing. But if you're in a hurry, make use of the descriptive timestamps that are listed down below in the description bar, but also you can scroll across them right under this video. All right, let's get started. This one is really fun, and I don't know if you heard about it, but I was really excited when I saw it, and it's a tough one to get, so I'm kind of proud I got this one. This is the Estee Lauder collaboration with clothing designer and all-around kind of fashion-y, it girl, Shooting Cho. I might have mispronounced that. I hope I did it. Um, this is called the Pure Color Dare to Express Eyeshadow Palette. It is her design in conjunction with Estee Lauder. It is beautiful. I got this. Where did I get it? I got it on the Selfridges site. So in the US, that was $54. It was on the Estee Lauder site um, and is sold out. I don't know if they'll bring it back because it is limited edition. It was $58 there. So it's going to be around that. Um, there's also some lipsticks that go with the collection, but I just picked this up because wait until you see it. It is so colorful. Let's just look at the packaging first, shall we? We're gonna try it on, um, and we're gonna swatch it in two different lightings. So we have all of these colors, but what I'm gonna have trouble describing for you is the raised floral aspects here that are done in a sort of, like a silken threading built up. So this flower is raised, and this flower is raised. These are flat but there's two that are raised, kind of fabric raised. They're beautiful, and those colors repeat around the palette. Inside there is a mirror, and then wait until you see this. Now, I've had my grimy little hands all over it swatching, but if I can bend back the mirror, take a look at this. Look at this. Look at this palette. And you know, this is nothing new, um, because of course the designer, this was made in China, because the designer is herself uh, Chinese, and we have seen this, you know, when we look at Florasis and we look at a few of the other um, beauty lines, they're really these really ornate palettes. I want to say that there's 10 shades in here, but there's more than that. Um, the sparkle, there's a little bit of an overspray of sparkle on the shimmer shades. Once you get underneath the um, overspray, it's still a shimmer shade, it's just not a glittery shade. Okay, there is a little bit of an overlay. Um, and I, you know, I counted all the bold shades to get 10, but you know, even if I can clo go close up there, even within the shades, there are more shades. Um, you're gonna end up mixing them. There's a little bit of pink and this yellow flower up top, for instance. You're gonna end up just swirling your brush and all of that pretty much. But you know, if you really wanted to count, I suppose there's a lot more than 10 shades. And I was just very attracted to it and interested in it. And I have to tell you that upon swatching it, I was quite surprised to find that the colors really come across. They're not powerful colors even in the pan, but they swatch pretty much exactly as they are in the pan. And you'll see what I mean. The shimmers are just perfectly shimmery without being glittery. And the satin shades feel like a very nice, um, not too heavy, but a nice creamy uh, satin shade. Almost like if Natasha Denona were to do very subtle colors. She doesn't tend to all the time, as you know, but they're not, they're very satiny, very creamy, and they do appear, you'll see in the swatches, the way they do in the pan, which surprised me. I thought they would be much more faint. Um, there was no scent or anything like that. And then of course, this quite amazing packaging on this limited edition product. So we are going to play with that today. And the other product that we're going to look at is another new one today, and it is from Guerlain. Let's talk about the Guerlain Meteorites. Now, if you have been with this channel for a while, you will know that my favorite finishing powder is the Guerlain Meteorites. Very quickly, without going into it because I have whole videos on it, a setting powder is when you've finished your complexion and you want to set your, you want to set your concealer, you want to set your foundation with a little bit of powder, 
so it doesn't crease, etc. A finishing powder is generally, but not always, a little bit more luminous of a powder. And I like to apply it with a flat top kabuki brush. We'll be using Sonia G today. And you just kind of buff it into your face over all of your makeup. And it leaves this really beautiful, um, almost like Photoshopped finish. Really, really pretty. Um, and so I've always used, here's one of my old original ones in the original packaging, the Guerlain Meteorite. So Violette over at Guerlain has redone them. They call it a revisit of the famous meteorites. They have revisited the scent in all of the shades. Um, they preserved the violet scent that's in it. Um, to me, the original meteorites, which I'm holding here, always used to smell like that violet candy. Do you remember those little purple, hard, square, chalky, almost candies that had a real mm, certain like candy violet scent to them? Kind of a strange candy for American kids to have, um, but I remember really liking it. Um, so they've updated that same scent and they've made it a bit woodier and muskier and added a hint of vanilla in. So we will give a big sniff on that. Um, yes, this is a scented product, always has been. And yes, when a house is a storied fragrance house, such as Guerlain, I forgive them of that. It's hard for me if Tarte adds a scent because it's like, why are you adding fragrance? You know what I mean? But um, Guerlain, this is what they do. So I allow them it. Um, and here is the new packaging. And I have also gotten one of the new shades. This is the 01 Pearly White. Now for a product that was actually launched originally in 1987, this is one of the earlier I still have it, one of the earlier canisters. Um, and you can use this for, for setting and finishing. I like to use it for finishing, and it's what we're gonna use it for today. But they have one that works for cooler skin tones, warmer skin tones, amber skin tones, and then this new pearly one. Now our community member, Simo, uh, sent me a DM about this and she said she was picking it up because she, like me, really loves the meteorites. And she was surprised by how glittery it was. So we're gonna try it. We're gonna look at this new smell the first time they are revisiting it, as they say, the scent since 1987. And it's gotten this new packaging, which is quite glorious. This is a $72 product. And of course I had to compare it. $72 for 0.7 ounces or 20 grams. Uh, this original was 0.8 ounces and 25 grams. So you got five more grams and 0.1 more ounces in the older one. So they, they cheated us just a little bit on the product, but not too bad. My goodness, I've had this one forever. They never go bad, in my opinion, anyway. So we're going to be playing with that a little bit today, too, and we'll see how sparkly we find it. In fact, let's go ahead and go to some swatches. Let's do this first indoors. I tried to, in indoor studio lighting, I tried to line up the 10 oh, most obvious prominent shades. Look at how this swatch with one swatch each. This is the Estee Lauder Shooting Chio palette, the pure color dare to express eyeshadow palette. But all the way by my wrist is a sloppy little swatch of the brand new Guerlain Meteorite setting and finishing pearls in 01 Pearly White and that is in studio lighting. I was so surprised as to how true to palette these swatched from the Estee Lauder. But let's take it outside to see it a little better in the warm California sunshine. It really was warm outside today, but my gear lawn was not delivered until almost the evening hour. So we are still in nice, clear daylight swatches, but we missed the sunshine just a little bit. We missed the sunshine, barely but we missed it. All right, let's go ahead and try these on. Before we do, please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Give it a click. It certainly helps me out. And if you want, you can also look down below for places to purchase the products we're talking about or the products I'm wearing in addition. And super thanks, always appreciated, plus our $4.99 a month. Members only. We're going to have members only giveaways, members only lives, and all sorts of fun things. We would love to see you there. All right, let's get started. I, I think we're going to go ahead and use our little 01 Pearly Whites first. Now this comes with a little sponge on top. I never use it. This is just a Rebecca thing. First of all, I like this, the flat Kabuki style brush with it, but also I don't like when this gets dirty and I just, I think it's really pretty and 
very like boudoir feeling and I just don't want it to be dirty. I like the padding on it. There's a few ways to do this once you take out the pad. You can go ahead and give these a shake if you've never used meteorites before and then use what's on the cap or you can just stick right in there, but it gets a nice on the cap. Let's take a gander at the scent first. Oh, that is updated. Okay, let me smell the original. <laughs> Wish I had smell a vision the original is much more straight violet, like the violet candy. This one, yeah, I can tell that they added musk and a little bit of vanilla. I don't mind it, actually. And I was a big fan of the first, but I don't mind it. I do trust Violette over at Guerlain, their creative director. Okay, so as I told you, you can go ahead and use this as a setting powder, but I want to use this today as a finishing powder. So my face is all finished. I've got some Guerlain blush. I don't have any highlighter because I was talking to Simo and I'm like, oh, this is going to be glittery. So Let's just see. I'm going to see what this does just by buffing it in, okay? So we can go onto the top of the lid, which I just did right there. And we can also go on to, right onto the meteorites themselves. And let's just go crazy with it. And let's see what we think. It is towards the end of the day, so I'm not going to be wearing this makeup too, too long today anyway. So we might as well just get into it and see if I'm a glitter ball or not. There's definitely some glitter to these. And for instance, Simo was not imagining things. I gotta stop talking because I am straight up ingesting powder. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing a lot and I'm really buffing away. Um, with these soft Sonia G brushes, you can really go to town. And um, the more you buff, the nicer the face will get. It doesn't pull up the makeup. I have the Guerlain foundation underneath, Guerlain blush and it doesn't pull up any sort of makeup and makes you look so much better. There's definitely more of a luminosity to this new shade than there was to say, this is the medium shade, uh, the previous shade uh, from before. There's definitely a little bit more luminosity, but I actually like a luminosity in my finishing powder and I think it is very, very pretty. If you don't want to have a very luminous finish, you might want to stay away from this one, but I don't see actual huge glitter particles, but I do see a lot of luminosity more than I normally would. I'm kind of liking it. I think it really is brightening and lifting my complexion and I'm very happy with it. And I also think it'll go extremely well with this palette. Well, maybe we'll try this for blush as well as these shades are so pretty. Let's see. Okay, let's do two different eye looks first. Um, wow, we have a lot of choices here and I brought over a lot of rougher brushes to play with as well. Let's go ahead into this right here because this is a kind of a satin matte shade down here. And let's put this all over this eye. It's very satiny. And this should be about skin color, but look at that, just the way that applies. This is a beautiful palette. Absolutely beautiful. Very much in the spirit of the designer, the uh, fashion designer who designed it. And now I'm gonna go right over same brush. This is brush number 15. No need to create brush laundry. Hey, I don't know, I'm gonna go into the crease here. I don't know if you saw, but over in the community section here on YouTube, I actually did a glossary. Community member Lynn had a fun idea to do a glossary of terms that are frequently used by me here on this channel. And so I put together, I'm gonna to go under the eye with this. I put together a little glossary of terms the other day. Um, see if you can find it, it's kind of fun. Brush laundry was on there. Okay, wow. This is a very subtle, very pretty palette. What I'm gonna do is I'll switch brushes and then I'm gonna go in also with a refer. We're working just with refer today. This is a mini number two. I'm gonna go in right here. I don't know if we'll be able to use all 10 of these shades, but this applies like a dream. Um, sometimes these pretty palettes and not Fluorasis or anything like that, but there's some other brands, um, some American brands, I'm not gonna call them out and embarrass them, that make really gorgeous looking kind of artistic-y palettes like this and there's no payoff, they're more to look at. This has definite color payoff and I find that most refreshing. Um, but like, like I said, so does Fluorasis and a lot of those brands, so it's kind of in that tradition. Um, Estee Lauder is gonna cringe. They would like to think that they make their own traditions, thank you, but you know, sometimes they don't going in with that shade right there in the corner. And I like this a lot. Um, now remember, we're looking at Asian makeup for an uh, often Asian audience, and that kind of subtle eye look is very pretty and very much appreciated. 
but I'm just talking about the, the initial style up. Okay, let's go into this eye and let's play, what did I bring over here? A 14 Max from Refer. So let's go in with this beautiful purple uh, shade right here. Let's just go into, I didn't even knock it off the brush. Let's just go into this right here. All around the eye. I have something in this eye that I cannot get out. So if I'm looking a little like blinky in this video, that's why. <laughs> I'm not supposed to admit that. The show must go on, Rebecca, don't admit it. And what if I were to flip this over again to avoid brush laundry and go into the green here? And let's see what that does. <gasps> this is a lovely palette. This reminds me a little bit in spirit, not necessarily in shade, but you remember the Lancome Louvre palette that just came out? Also kind of an artistic palette. Kind of reminds me, I, I know the shades aren't the same, but the kind of idea behind it and the color payoff this is very pretty, and I'm going to link it down below. At time of filming, it was still available at Selfridges, so I'll make sure it is before I go on the air with this, and then we'll um, I'll, I'll link it there. Let's go into this really pretty yellow shade, and I'm just going to go right here from the inner corner. It didn't even get muddy. That purple and that green are really kind of holding their own. I'm very happy with that. And this gold shade can go over it really, really well too. And I think that the palette goes really well with the Guerlain. They're just very kind of subtle and sweet little kisses of kind of glimmer and shimmer. And I think they're very, very pretty. I'm very pleased with this palette. Um, gosh, I wanna play with some of these other shades. So let me just put this on here a little bit. I'm just kind of playing with them now, guys. Um, what did I not get in there? A little subtle pink here. I'm going to go back onto this eye. Yeah, these shades are just, I didn't make a coordinated or certainly not cohesive look. I just wanted to see how they performed when you applied them the way you would at home, the way anyone would to your eyes. So again, not trying to teach you artistry. I'm a writer. I'm a journalist. Not trying to repeat myself, but we have new people here all the time. I'm just trying to show you how products perform. I'll leave the artistry up to you at home, okay? Because some of you are very, very talented makeup artists in your own right. But it is so pretty. And I have to tell you, I'm going to vote thumbs up for my skin tone. You can tell me what you think for your skin tone about these new meteorites. It's a little bit less product, but I'm not offended by the new smell. I'm certainly in love with the new packaging. Who wouldn't be? I still think the meteorites are the best. You can use them to set under eyes and things like that, but as a finishing powder with a nice buffing brush, I really think it just gives you really a dreamy, perfect, or as perfect as I can get these days, complexion. Uh, in terms of eyeshadow, if you can find this one, I think you'll be happy with it. It is quite a limited edition collector's item from the case to the shades in the pan, to the way they perform, really quite identical in swatching and in use as what we see in the pan. I find that really, really impressive. So two excellent products, I think. I really do. I would love to know your take on it, however. I mean, this is what makes us a community. Did you see this palette? Did you know this was even out? How about the Guerlain Meteorites? Tell me what you guys are thinking. Are you interested in it? Or did you pick either of them up? I, I always want to know your thoughts, and I do get back to everybody. I really do. If you don't hear from me, it means that YouTube removed your comment. And you know how I feel about that. Oh, don't like that. So just try me again if you don't hear back from me. Let me know any swatches or any close-ups or things that you want to see over on Instagram. That's what I do there, and you can ask me down below or over there on Instagram, whatever it is that works for you. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.